So you're supposed to make a projectile motion launcher. The goal is simply to launch the projectile horizontally from a height above the floor, measure the range, and then calculate the velocity. That's part one. Then in part two, launch it maybe from the same height at an angle. It'll be the same velocity that the launcher shoots at. Then you can predict the range, shoot it, and see if you get there. The launcher I suggested building was one made out of a tube. This is a common idea. You have a couple of rubber bands going inside, a couple of paper clips keeping the rubber band from getting pulled into the hole, some kind of tape pocket to hold the ball, and then some strings that come out through the hole in the bottom and that you can pull with. You put a knot there so you know how far you're pulling it. You can measure the angle of inclination, put some books on one end on the table, and by pulling it back with this knot, you can see exactly how far back you're pulling it every time so you have repeatable results. The ball, of course, has to be small enough to fit in the tube, and the tube needs to be rigid enough so it won't collapse when you pull on it. Yeah, these are all engineering details you have to work on. The first time I saw one of these was when my student brought it in, Taylor Rhodes, who now is working on an engineering degree at the University of Miami. She brought that in thing and it worked great. So some kids went online and they saw a notebook launcher. It's got these two binder clips near the top, a rubber band pulled around the top, and a little piece of tape to pull the rubber band back with. All the clips do is to keep the rubber band from sliding down the notebook. In the video, you can see that they're going to launch a bottle cap. And I've told everybody not to use a bottle cap because it will be affected by air resistance greatly. But now I see in the video that they're only shooting it like 50 centimeters. We're going for bigger fish than that. You can unwind a paper clip and hook it onto the uh, rubber band and launch that. But you better be careful because you're going to shoot somebody's eye out. In the video, they suggest putting a sheet of notebook paper that's lined so you know how far back you're pulling it each time. You can actually mark it off. That allows for repeatability. Stack some books under this end, measure your angle. You really want to go crazy? Build yourself a catapult out of wood. I already made a video about that over the summer. So here's launcher A. Nice big firm tube. Some of the paper towel rolls are too flimsy. Here's the pocket on the other side to hold the ball. You can see how I've set the rubber bands up so that they don't go right down the middle of the pocket. Then the ball flips out and the rubber band slides past. I actually made a pocket that will hold the ball. You can see how the string is attached. It's actually, it goes over the pocket and inside. It's not just tape holding it there or else it'll pop out. It actually comes around and goes inside the thing in a continuous loop. I've tied it off and I have my knot at the other end here. You have to push it inside, and you can see how I have a paper clip keeping the end of the rubber band from pulling through. And there's the action down in there, and you can see the knot coming out. Drop the ball down inside, sits right in there, and it works great. Now this thing, I'm not kidding you, I made it in about 15 minutes. Let's say your tube is just too narrow. The ball doesn't fit in there very well. Try making your own ball out of the aluminum foil. I like the rubber ball because it's not going to be affected by air resistance that much. Uh, yeah, this thing might be, but it, if you squeeze it tight, it'll have enough density so it shouldn't be too bad. And uh, you can see that you can make it any size you want. And so here I have the books. I can measure the angle simply by propping this like this. I don't need a protractor, I can just measure, I can measure over and up to get the angle. Drop the aluminum down inside, it goes right in the pocket, it's big enough, deep enough to hold it. And now I can just pull this back until I see the knot right there and let it go. And man, did that work. It's easily going a few meters. Plan B, the AP physics binder. Okay, now I know you're all taking AP Physics next year, so this has got to work. Okay, here we go. I got a clip. I got another clip. I got the rubber band. Almost done. I took my paper clip and I unwound it. I'm going to put it like this. And now I'm ready to pull 
I'm ready to pull and shoot it. How do I know how far I'm pulling it? Put the piece of paper in here, fold it over the top. I can mark where the paper clip goes. I can say, oh, I want to pull it back to here. Pull and launch. That goes really far, really fast. Be careful. Have plenty of paper clips on hand because you're going to lose those things. Unwind it. Use the books. Measure the angle. Again, use a triangle up and over, right? A perfect success. Now, they suggested using a bottle cap and putting it here and now launching the bottle cap. It's going to catch a lot of air, and it's just not going to give you good results uh, for the distances that we're using. So we're supposed to launch the rubber ball. Trouble is, you put a rubber ball on this thing, the rubber band is just going to slip past it. So that's why you have to work on making a pocket for it. Well, that gets really complicated. If you don't want to do that, just use a paper clip like this. It's not going to catch a lot of air. It's dense enough. It'll give you good results. And if you want to go crazy, you can make one of these things. A nice little catapult. You can clamp it to the table. It's got this little stop here. That stop can come out. With the stop removed, it'll launch horizontally. Do you want to launch it at an angle? Well, you can tip the whole thing if you want to, or insert the stop, and then it'll launch at an angle. I put a bottle cap here with tape and that's where the ball is going to go. Works great. So look, all of this is an engineering project. No one expects you just to follow instructions. If it doesn't work, that's okay. Just keep tinkering with it. This is what real lab work is like. It just doesn't work first time around. You have to play with things to try to figure out what works best. If you're not working with lab equipment, trying to set something up, make it yourself, figure out how it works, you're missing a big part of what science is all about. It is about experimentation. Now, you don't really need to be a carpenter to make one of these things. I've seen kids make these things with pencils, tape, rubber bands, Legos. I mean, just get creative and you can make any one of these things and it'll work for you. Have fun.